And I was a co-maid of honor in that one because a co-maid of honor, two people. A yes. co-maid of honor. That's not how you do that. Let me tell you. I had at least three friends that I thought could be my best man, but there was only ever going to be one best man. And so I came up with specific things for everybody else to do. One was by Miss Man. One was my officiant. Uh, one was, uh, well, he was, uh, he was bringing his mother in because that was the mother of the bride. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. And, oh, okay. And then one, I had a special task for him, which was to do absolutely nothing. He had zero responsibilities. All he, he wasn't at the front of the line. He wasn't at the back of the line. He had to do nothing because, you know, that suited his personality. Um, I nice. mean, because it was a lot for him just to get up and be there. Anyway, welcome to Wedding Chat. This is Salty yes. Dog, Jesse Sams, and I am your host. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say, since we're, just to wrap that up, by the mm -hmm. time I got married, you know how many bridesmaids I had? Hmm. How many? One. Wow. Bridesmaid slash maid of honor slash sister of the bride. She did it all, and I let her pick whatever dress she wanted. I was like, I don't even care what it looks like. Just wow. tell me what color it is so the flowers don't clash. Wow. Was it a big wedding or a small wedding? <laughs> small. <laughs> I think we had 24 people. We got married on a tiny island that could only fit like 28. And so that way I got to tell people, no, you don't fit. <laughs> Okay, hang on, salty dog. You got married on a tiny island? Oh, yes, in the middle of a of a lake in the Colorado mountains. And so you had to go across this arched bridge to get there, and it was just this little island that only seated like 28 people by code because, you know, you could fall off into the... That is, so. that is the setup for an episode of Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> like a guest disappears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, wow. nobody disappeared. We all stayed together. And and you would have been one of the ones that had a secret, but then when the secret was revealed, it just turned out to be endearing to you. Like, you know, like, oh, yeah, I didn't want to say anything, but I forgot to bring the special shoes I was supposed to wear at the wedding, so I bought these backups <laughs> that look very similar. I feel so awful. I'm so guilt-ridden. <sighs> oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's 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 hang on. Looks like Bibleridian <laughs> is asking about Potawatomi. So now we're going to have to shift focus and talk about my wife's master's thesis on Potawatomi. So what? That was her thesis? Yes, it was an o. Uh, it was an optimality theoretic analysis. So you know, but it was an OT. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's fine. I just had a dream about uh, her advisor, my former professor, talking about OT last night. It was weird. Anyway, but... That is um, weird. But yeah, it was an OT. I, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, I had to switch to live chat because I suddenly realized I wasn't seeing Bibliridian's question. And mm -hmm. so I was on top chat by accident. But now I'm seeing everybody. I see you all now. And hello. Yeah. Okay, go on with Potawatomi. Yeah, so it was a Potawatomi analysis of the of its big thing, which is that it's got, uh, you know, either a penthesis, a schwa penthesis or schwa deletion, uh, depending mm. on how you analyze it, except every so often an O is inserted instead of a schwa. It's a ghost phantom O that appears right where a schwa should appear, but sometimes Nine. it's an O, and uh, and the question is: Is it just lexical at this point? Is it morphological? Is there some sort of phonological basis for this? How mm -hmm. do you account for it? If uh, if you put your you know if you put your twentieth century uh, you know synchronic linguistics binder blinders on and say blah 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 blah, there's no history. All it's only what a baby hears. That's it. Anyway, so that was her. Uh, that was her uh, thesis, and if you're looking for resources, all I need to do is pull it up and go to her references section. There'll be tons there. Yeah. Um, and somebody had asked Potawatomi, and I totally understand. And I actually had to look. I knew they were somewhere in North America, but it's um, the North American 
native indigenous language from your around pers- Lake Michigan. Yeah, from your perspective, it's up here. This is, you know, that's the United States. From my perspective, was that meaning that you didn't think I knew where Lake Michigan was? No, from uh, I was I was saying from their perspective, not your perspective. Uh, it was an exclusive your. Um, <laughs> And I was, it was because we're mirrored, right? So like, this is east, correct? This is is east and this is west. Sorry, I... Yeah, see? So, you know. You're you're right, you're right. Here, uh, Um, let's... uh, How did she get on Potawatomi? Michigan, right? Right. (laughs) (laughs) Was it backwards? Uh. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. I'll let you handle this one, David. Um, John McWhorter says the base form of the verb is the past tense in isolating languages. Why? How does this come about? In all isolating languages? (laughs) Yeah, that seems like a really broad statement. It sounds like something you'd say. I enjoy reading his writing just because it's fun to read, but I don't always agree with some of the broad statements that get made in his writing, which appeal to a larger audience, but which may be linguistically slightly inaccurate because they're broad yeah that's and that's generalize a, a lot that's a really good way of putting it um but uh i mean the, the funny thing is that you i mean you could say that almost everything is in the past tense because the moment you have said it it's already happened it's, it's done yeah <laughs> so there's that <laughs> So we can get philosophical, or <laughs> yeah. But um, as as a reminder to myself, I'll go and I'll go and pull up um, I'll go pull up Aaron's thesis and, uh, after we're done, and I'll put just some of the resources there in the in a comment, I guess. So nice. so look look for it later, because I don't remember exactly where it is, but I know I'll be able to find it. Um, anyway, oh, good evening. Well, um, yeah, someone wrote in Hawaiian to you. Um, oh, so nice. The hell? I actually, because Matea said hello mm-hmm. to David and Sassafras, and I'm going to connect that to my first piece of business. Woo! And in fact, my only particular piece of business until we decide what we're tackling today, in Gava. Yeah. Um, and it is the poll on what our word should be for sassafras yes and we had some really really good options and so i was excited um here i'm oh, sorry i started reading quote uh, started reading comments i should i should focus i should focus yeah uh, um, i will make a quick note that of course uh her thesis it was entirely phonology so some of her resources okay. may have extra information about, you know, the grammar, but um, it's going to be mainly focused on phonology. So they might be specific resources that are not useful to that question. Anyway, go ahead. Did your thesis focus on phonology? Phonetics. It's a phonetics experiment. We haven't... You guys we... are the, the sound-oriented family. Yeah. See, Chris and I, were focused more on grammar things. And so I think that's... That's very interesting. Okay. Um, So our bottom two, we had Lasma and Idzin, or Idzinu, I believe, would be the correct pronunciation of that one. Okay. Um, Those were the bottom two. Um, Both great words, by the way. And in fact, I want to keep this list just in case we ever, you know, want some fun bases to work with. Um, and then above that, we had Nympha, which became Nympha, which was kind of exciting with that MH combination, mm. but it didn't quite make the cut. Um, above that, with 10 votes each, we had tied um, to Glam, te, let me get my, it's not Wama, it'd be Teguama. <laughs> there we go. I can do it. <laughs> Um, and also with 10 votes was uh, Shedolu, which was actually a compound compound of moon and blood to be like the moon blood tree for the, the red leaves, I would I believe. That those was are, the inspiration. Those were some really good uh, suggestions. There were some really good ones for this right? one. Yeah. Right? Um, then we had a tie for, with 12 votes above that, with Sokangui and um, 
uh, Samus, which was, of course, the one I was kind of internally rooting for just because it was literally <laughs> my last name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> turned into our language. Um, and then in second place with 14 votes was Fenebe, which I just thought was really fun. Fenebe. Mm-hmm. Fenebe. Um, but the winner, the winner with 18 votes was um, Idzalis. Ah, Idzalis. All right. Yes. So <laughs> now we get to our theoretical question, since I, I'm going to answer this. To dot or not to dot. Okay, so Edzalis. Now, actually, be- oh, the, yeah, the discussion we've had. Okay, yeah, yeah. But actually, first, um, what is its plural going to be? We decided that they were actually going to be eating it, right, and actually using parts of it. Sure, it is the, it is the um, tree, though. It's not the bark. It's not yeah. the root. Um, that is true. So perhaps not so edible since we're, you're right. We were going to modify it um, to, to talk about specific parts of the tree. And so in that case, <sighs> inedible would be just the tea, right? Tidzalis? All right. Hold on. Meridian wants to come and say hi. Hey, Meridian. Hi. How are you? Good. You have dinosaurs on your shirt. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and I think that's a stegosaurus that I see. Mm, yeah. You can't really see him because the thing is almost below him. Oh, okay. You can't okay. see the triceratops, can you? There's a triceratops. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. It's a pink one, and he has a little white, um, I mean, a little pink red. <laughs> oh, nice. And the Is there any purple fish. on there? Um, no, just these ones. Okay. Okay. My pants are just pink, but my panties are unicorns and oh, okay. rainbows. <laughs> it's like clouds. All right. Well, Daddy needs to keep doing stuff. I love you too, baby. Oh, hugs always make me feel better. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, so if we want to do, uh, so again, if there's going to be some sort of special story about this tree, because we decided it's going to be a good tree, right? There is an argument that we could do any one of these three plurals depending on what its backstory is. Um, and actually, Eternal had just said we could make it animate. Yeah. Yeah. Toto pro parts kind of way. Um, y- yes, but anyway, but we actually have to make you know a decision about it. Um, I I could also see doing the edible one, given that they use different parts of it, mm-hmm. but not the leaves. I forget were the leaves edible or not, I and mean, we know the roots are edible, and the bark. We know the roots are. Um... I know at one point we had talked about you can do things with the leaves. I couldn't remember if we had found out whether rabbits could eat. Well, they're going to have root beer. We've, we've, we, we know that somehow. I'm checking to see if there's any specific information about sassafras leaves mm, okay. and rabbits. There, hmm. As you're searching, uh-huh. there could be a distinction between trees where the trees produce something that the rabbits eat or use in cooking versus they don't. And that's how the plurals are assigned. So a a kind of metonymical um, edible assignment. Can you say that again? Because that just sounded nice. Metonymical metonymical edible assignment of plurality that was just the the stress the syllables everything was great about that um (laughs) so rabbits eat the fruit i didn't know there was fruit there's fruit bark and wood of sassafras trees and this is direct directly from usda government plant guide entry for sassafras there's it looks like there's little berry like things that grow near the leaves and rabbits can eat those, 
the bark in the wood. So the USDA has information about what rabbits do with the tree? Yes, it's under the wildlife section in the plant guide entry. It also talks Whoa. about, obviously, first and more importantly, what humans do with it potentially from their point of view. But for wildlife, it says the fruits are readily eaten by wildlife and it goes into birds and then um, black bears, beaver, rabbits, and squirrels. This is White tailed deer also eat the twigs and foliage. This is amazing. I mean, this is, I mean, this is blowing my mind for more than one reason. Like, in general, like when you're doing con lining, it, you've often had occasion to come up with a way to come up with words for different types of plants that you were unfamiliar with, right? Uh huh. Who knew that the USDA could be a resource for this, a world building resource? I challenge you, Professor Jessica Sams, <laughs> to on your syllabus add the USDA as a resource, a world building resource. Well, it will be now for the spring when I offer my invented class because <sighs> I'm going to make sure they know that there is a plant guide. That's extraordinary. I mean, just and it's really it's beautiful. It's like a whole little encyclopedia entry with you know the resources at the end, um, broken down, talking about its history even. I mean, it you sounds know, like it's better than Wikipedia. And it it's it just looks beautiful. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. wow! Well, hats off to you, USDA webmaster. Um, okay, I think then. This is definitely getting the the edible plural. Now, do we have do we have any other trees yet? Any kind of we have a tree with leaves, <clears throat> but this is a generic word, so inedible. Right. And that's so that's that's a superordinate term. We don't need to worry about that. Um, maybe we, that's our only one. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe moving forward, we can discuss doing that, or we can separate the trees by that that's kind of a neat idea um so which plural is that is uh the edible is um a second i was even just here that's the one um that gets the en prefix or an e prefix well this would be an en because it begins with a vowel um, uh no 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 it, it or would it be an e prefix because it was originally a um, yes. Stop. Exactly. So it'll just be like a uh, lemongrass. Um, and remember. So, so th then to dot or not to dot. Yeah, this is the one where I didn't do the dot because it wasn't necessary. Even though this is uh, could theoretically be separable into meaningless prefix and root, since the plural and the singular are the same. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So what's yeah. our word? Exalis. It, yes, that is exactly right. And so it came from the pre-nasalized Z, A-L-I-S is the, the root. All right, sassafras tree. And um, in the comment section, yeah, our three noun classes for plural are um, animate, edible inanimate and inedible inanimate and then um i believe it was yeah mike is correct that the specific one for rabbit that special class was only for the pronouns um we did have a rabbit class for pronouns but not for plurals okay good 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 um I wanted to, okay, so that is done. By the way, who, who came up with that suggestion? Who added Zalis? That is a great question. I think it was Nathan, but I need to now check because mm. I didn't, whenever I was doing the um, calculations, I did not keep track of who actually suggested it, but that won't be too long. See, I'm just talking as I look it up. Mm -hmm. Verifying. Oh no, that was not. Um, it was Lilia. Oh, cool. Well, right yes. on. Megan had a different pre-nasalized one, so that's what I was thinking about. Um, but yeah, that was Lilia. Yeah, you. It, it's kind of wild because, like, you know, you came up, you came up with a really great word, 
if there were other competing words that had really great backstories, other words that were really funny, and then other words that were like references to you, which is a person that generally people like, and yet the word without the backstory won that was a reference to nothing just because people liked the sound of it. Came up with a good one, right on, like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Destin Nova had a suggestion that said, er, what if early on rabbits shape wood with their teeth to produce tools, extending the edible class? Um, and some people had commented that they liked that. Um, but they're not still not eating idea. them. Idea. What's that? Sorry. They're still not eating them. Uh, Wesley Pickles. Oh, Wesley looks like a noun to me. It as a oh, you mean in the other section? I gotcha. I gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Got it. Sassafrasing. That would be. Mm -hmm. That'd be great as a verb. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe that's where sass came from. <laughs> Are you trying to make a connection between me and sass? <laughs> sass is a weird word, though. Wow. You know what? I'm just going to say and see if maybe we can push this and trick some people. Sass is a shortening of sassafras. Yeah. Oh and, my gosh, I just looked up its origin. And, sass. And? And? It's from sauce. Like saucy. Oh, that's even better! Forget it! Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> because apparently... An informal use of sauce is to be rude or impudent to someone. Oh, sure. They're so saucy. He had sauced a monitor who wanted his shoes shined. That's a sentence. That That is so wild. So we have to sauce going to sass, right? But then we also have the adjectives sassy and saucy, which essentially yeah. mean the same thing, coming from the same source. Yes. Now, um, saucy is antiquated. It is. Saucy is antiquated. But, I mean, you know, it's it's still is kept it? alive in the phrase, you know, a saucy bit of baggage, you know? I've never said that phrase, but I didn't think saucy was It's said a lot around these like, parts. Like, saucy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you're saying I'm antiquated, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you uh, saucy boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, Romeo and Juliet. That's probably what kept it around. Because kids keep reading it, you know? Shakespeare. Is that a real quote, Eternal? I'll sauce her with bitter words. Oh, I like that. <laughs> so there's there's an entire... So Matthias is talking about you, Spoonie Bard. There's an entire story behind that. It was a mistranslation. <laughs> oh, you spoony bard yeah it was uh it's a uh, it's from the game final fantasy well it's final fantasy 2 marketed here originally in the united states it was actually final fantasy uh 4 but there's a part where you know the the father of the daughter who went off with the bard and the father doesn't like the bard and he goes to attack him when the his kingdom of damsian if that's how it's pronounced is being attacked by you know the the uh the airships and he says, you spoony bard, as, uh, you know, a high insult. Um, nice. But yeah, I get, nice. you read up on it. It was like all just a mistranslation. They just came up with something well, brilliant by accident. <laughs> Isaac points out the classic question from Shakespeare, to sass or not to sass? That is the sassafras. <laughs> Kids okay, like sass okay. Pass so, here. um... Dark Horse had suggested that potentially one of the words on our list that didn't make the cut could become a word for thunder and or lightning. Um, so that is something we can keep uh, in mind. Well, I mean, we'll need something for that eventually, certainly. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll, we, will, we will get there. Um, we, is there a way we can save the words on that list? I mean, they're, all, they're always there on the website, but maybe we just... Here... This is I have a coming like I have a numbers spreadsheet with all of the entries. Do you want me to just share that with you? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna make another memento tattoo. Don't forget the list. Tattoo. Have you seen memento? Yes. 
Remember? Like he tattoos. Oh, yeah, where he made the tattoo. Can I just copy and paste this list, though, directly into our document so you don't have to retype everything? Oh, I was just going to say, don't forget the list of words for Sassafras. Oh. Okay. That um, didn't make the cut. As you're typing that, Evan says that in kid slang, sauce means pass me, like, pass me. So pass me the ketchup has become sauce me the ketchup. I, I dispute that. I get... I can do, I can dispute one thing per per stream. This and is and this is it. This is it. This is okay. my disputation. How well, you, you can you can yeet me the ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> how do you dis How do you dispute? How do you turn dispute into a um, you know an into a noun? Is it into a noun? Yeah, is it disputation? Dispute. Dis dispute. No, it's just dispute. It's a dispute. That's my dispute. Yeah. So I can. It's both forms. I can dispute. You can have a dispute. I can dispute one thing per stream. This one is my dispute. Yes, and I just verified it in the dictionary. Yes, it's both a noun and verb. Well, no, it's a noun and a verb, but the noun dispute means an argument. Not, right. Not the act of disputing. But it's the same. Somebody verify this, like, like you know what I yes, mean? Yes, but why would you want a? disputation that just it's why not just say it's my my one veto or my one well veto sure if you want to use a different word but um but like a dispute is is it there has to be two participants right well there were two participants evan gave uh, no a, a kid slang and you're saying you're disputing it i was di i was disputing the etymology not the person no, well, I didn't say you were disputing the person. I'm saying there was a suggestion. There was Not a, the here it is. You know, the, the, the common, the commonplacity. I was disputing the commonplacity. All right. Complacity. Okay. Oh, now we're getting all sorts of made up. I'm. We're just deriving everything. Okay. Let's. <laughs> Agma Schwa says there's a real disputation going on right now between us. Yeah, let's 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 just brask this and move on. I will, however, while you're scrolling to wherever you need to be, I am going to look up and see if. Thank you, Mike Katalenich. I pronounced but it correctly. Disputation that time. is also defined exactly the same way as dispute, which is debate or argument. It's just probably Except antiquated. Except it's a formal academic debate, and so like that doesn't <laughs> help your your case. No, it doesn't. I, I think we should just call it a dispute. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so wrong. Okay. It sounds so wrong. Okay. Okay. So, Moving on. did we finish uh, negation? Negation. Yes. Oh, I wanted to. I wanted to say something about this. I wanted to say something about this. So, um, okay. I, I understand there were there were some complaints about how we resolve negation, but sometimes. Languages just do stupid nonsense that shouldn't work, and then it just happens. And I give you, as an example, French. So everybody knows about uh, how French negation happened. You know, uh, uh, je, uh, what was it? Uh, je ne vais, I don't go. Je ne vais pas, I don't go a step, uh, where ba means step, just like it's as used in Pas de Dieu, the Tchaikovsky uh, song. And then, you know, later on, you could just use pas as a negation, you know, you know, je peux pas, uh, I don't, I don't go. So, here's the thing. Etymologically speaking, pas was a noun and it is being used as an object. So it's like, I don't go a step. I don't eat a bite. I don't write a point, you know, uh, je, uh, je ne crie pas. Uh, je ne crie, how do you speak French? Je ne crie pas. No, but not like that. Je ne crie pas. One, because there's a T on the end, right? Right? I, I don't speak French, so I'm just smiling and nodding. Unbelievable. Okay, but it's a part of English. Don't you have to? <laughs> because of the Norman Conquest? Don't you have to? <laughs> no. Okay, anyway. We, we made the language our own, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I speak as if I were there. <laughs> so Those Normans. <laughs> so anyway... Gosh, those Normans. Um, I can accept, you know, I think everybody can accept, oh, this is a, an irregular usage of the object, right? So that it doesn't need an article. So rather than, you know, uh, saying, you know, uh, je ne vais un pas, 
uh, I don't go a step. You say, uh, je ne vais pas. But then the question is, okay, if this thing derives from an object nominal, then right. what happens to the object of a transitive verb? Right? So, like, if you think about uh, je ne mange, je ne mange, what's the one for eating? Is it just rien? I think it is. Je ne mange rien. I don't eat, uh, or whatever a bite was. Let's just say it was nothing. Je ne mange rien. Um, if you want to put, I don't eat anything, you know, of something, you expect of there. So, like, I didn't eat any, I didn't eat the bread, uh, or I didn't eat a bite of bread. It should be, je ne mange rien du pain of the bread, right? Or du pain, uh, just of bread. But there isn't there. There isn't one there. Instead, French just throws the direct object after. As if as if the there's no history for this little marker there. None. There's no of. It's just like and then there it is. So, that's what I say about Wes. Named in honor <laughs> of Wesley Pickles. So, <laughs> nice um okay so yeah i actually i remember having oddly enough as you were talking i was like i'm pretty sure we've had almost this exact same conversation yeah and then i realized why i think it was when we were working on negation for miniche <gasps> miniche what a good language that one is right yeah it's really got uh, it's really got a lot of jesse in it <laughs> So it makes it so good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Wonderful. So uh, then have we done everything with negation, uh, basic predicate negation? I think that we have. The only thing that we haven't done is um, imperatives, uh, negative imperatives. Did, didn't we up here right where your cursor is? Yeah. So we did that. Right, and then there's also the pre-consonantal <laughs> negative. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was the whole point. Wes was the, the thing. Okay, so yeah. So are we done with negation then? I think so. And in fact, when we ended last time, because we were debating what to vote on, because we had really wrapped up what we were doing. And so oh. our next point was trying to decide what to do with the copula. Um, and that particular type of construction, which is above the negation section. Um Yes. And we had decided we didn't want to put that to a vote because right. that was like a really major point. Yeah. And we didn't want to get, we didn't want to jump into something we weren't ready to discuss. And yes. so. Okay. Um, Can we delete this then? Uh, what I'm highlighting yes. on page 17. Yes, because that was all about strategies that we were discussing. Okay. Gone. And then below that are the example sentences that sort of came together that I think ended up tied yeah. above anyway. Yeah, so we don't need that. We don't need those either. Um, and there's our tattoo. Okay. You do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna I need to get a sassafras tree tattoo now. <laughs> Wait. Do you have a tattoo? Have we discussed this? No, I, uh, have we? I don't know. I do, yes, but... How many tattoos do you have? Two. I knew it. I knew it. There's nobody on the entire planet that has exactly one tattoo. <laughs> it's... I'm trying to think. It's zero or two or more. That's it. Interesting. Man. Now... You were so much cooler than me. Do you realize that? Yeah. <laughs> So many ear piercings and you have tattoos. I've got nothing. Oh my gosh. That cracks me up. Now I'm thinking and I'm trying to think. Everybody I know who has tattoos does have. Yeah. More than one. Okay. Now I just, I'll have to start asking everybody. Um, cool. So I think we're ready then. One of them I assume is John Bon Jovi. Better be. <laughs> because he's a golden god, that's why. Okay. No, you are incorrect. Uh, <laughs> that is too funny. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> there is a... 
I like that. Okay. Other, my brain first read constrictions instead of constructions because my eyes are apparently seeing and looking at computers too much. Oh, it's because your glasses are in front of your eyes. Supposed to put your eyes in front of your glasses. I knew I did something wrong today. Okay, yeah. so do we have any um, animate nouns other than rabbit? Like, I don't think we have any of those yet, do we? Animate nouns? Like, yes. you know, saying like, I don't know, the rabbit is a mother, the rabbit is a person, the rabbit is a farmer, anything like that? Well, I mean, we've got daughter, mother, son, father. Oh, we do? Okay, the rabbit is a mother. Yeah. Is a mother. Let's, uh... And, um, Ada is mother. Cool. Um, okay, the rabbit is a mother. The rabbit was used to, sorry, used to be a mother. Um... Now let's see. Um, let's also go ahead and do um, the rabbit is some preposition in something that makes sense with that preposition. Do we have a word for forest yet, or anything like that? Oh, actually, Any big places? No, not forest. But oh yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that too. Um, I mean, we have grass. We don't have like. Eh, that's fine. It's uh, we'll we'll use that plural. Uh, the rabbit is on the grass. Rabbit is. Which should be a dulu. Yeah. Um, do we have a word for Warren? Um. We do, don't we? I thought we did. Yes, it's ungueda. Yeah. But on the grass is fine. But uh, but yeah, Warren was obvious. Um, was it? Wasn't it fine? No, it was fine. But then you said Warren was obvious. And I was like, was it? Oh, oh yeah. yeah okay. Um, all right. Are there any other... Oh, we have stump if they want to be like next to a stump. A river. Well, we, Don't forget we, Zeus. We just need the one. Um, oh, okay. Looking, this... Sorry, I'll stop looking things up then. Okay, the rabbit. Um, and so, obviously, for anything that has to do with, like, you know, adjectival predicate negation, that's all going to be verbal. So that doesn't matter. Um, is there any other type of copular construction that needs to be done or be a rabbit? Do not be a rabbit. I mean, maybe... Obviously. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I think mouse is the only other animal we have so far. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. What do you want? <laughs> what do you like? I, I suddenly lost the pages with... Goodness gracious. We have a lot of notes in here. Okay, I finally, I found where we are again. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I scrolled to look at the dictionary and then suddenly I couldn't find the, uh, the verb section again. Um, but I think that was a pretty good list. Was there any, um, because we had decided that anything with sort of adjective type things were going to be verbs, right? Like to be sweet or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Okay. Obviously with null copula, that's what we would have. It's a little odd, uh, but you know. Possible. Just having the side by side. I mean, it's it's possible. You may mm -hmm. add. Uh, um, the question is just if we like it. Um. Hmm. 
for some reason, like, I want to like it because it's simple. Yeah. But I'm not feeling it. Neither am I. Uh, Polynesian is really wonderful because it's got this little, this little bit that separates objects from subjects. And then for, um, uh, what you call it, um, uh, copular expressions, you just use, you just use that without a verb. So, I don't know, like, uh, what's, what's a thing in Hawaiian? A thing? I don't know, like, hekiki he kani. Um, uh, the child is a man. Um, Can you break that down, gloss style? Uh, hey means a. Uh, Okay. Oh, I, so it should have been, you know, it should have been kekeki, right? The child is a man. Uh, kekeki ihe, uh, kani, or, or kanaka, whichever one is more appropriate in that instance. Kanaka or kani is man, and then uh, he is a, uh, ke is the, keki is child, and um, i is a thing that stands, is a preposition that stands before direct objects in transitive constructions. But it also just separates the arguments in copular constructions. Huh. Yeah. That, well, well, that, that, okay. If we're gonna do that, I mean, obviously that's that's another option. Me, me, add. In other words, this is what Arabic does. Um, a lot of the time. Um which is it, it just separates them with a, a pronoun. It's essentially just a, a copy pronoun. So I don't know. Uh, but it, it's not all the time, but you could say, you know, like, you know, Walidi huwa mutarjim, which is uh, my father, he is a translator. Um, but you could just say Walidi uh, mutarjim, my father is a translator, and that's, that works as well. Um, but we can make it obligatory at least for third person. For first person, I mean, I should just... Uh, Did you just remember the pronoun off the top of your head? Yeah, because it's based on the word for rabbit. But still, oh. but still. Let's um, take a moment to celebrate that, please. Yeah, and then so, then that would leave us, though, with us ime. I am a rabbit because you generally don't use that copy construction or, um, when it's non-third person. Mm -hmm. Was that Roman? Did you hear little Roman? Was I just ignoring him? My poor boy. Roman. Well, I mean, there's definitely meowing, so it's one mm. of your cats. Oh, he's... And usually it's Roman. He's in the room now. Um, we knew that Kitty and so, I were having fun without it. Yeah. <laughs> Oon, thank you, by the way. I misremembered it. Well, so he's in the room? No, now he's out because I came out. Oh, Roman. Also, he's already sat your, several hair bands. So nice. His mission. Is your other cat's name just Kitty? Her name is Kelly, but she prefers okay. to be referred to as Kitty. She was okay. an only cat for a while. Yeah. Because I was like, I, I'm not sure if I just never asked. I'm not sure if I just never asked or if I just assumed it because every time you had posted pictures, it just had the caption of Kitty and I didn't know if you were just saying it was a cat or mm. if that was the actual name. Oh. oh. So now I feel good. I know both of your cat's names. <laughs> it only took me seven years. <laughs> um, so we have the... Uh, standard and uh, reduplicated forms and I believe standard is perfect reduplicated is imperfect there's really no point of having an imperfect form with to be and so um, you know it stands to reason that um, this distinction right here wouldn't exist um, so this, this, either of these would mean the rabbit is a mother or the rabbit was a mother. 
and presumably there would be some sort of extra verb or construction if you wanted to emphasize the fact that she used to be and is no longer. Uh, Roman, my boy. Oh, are you meowing because you want to go outside the way you often do? Come, come here, indoor cat. Come here, Roman. Come here, my boy. Come here. You little beast. Come on. Is um is the name Roman in any of your other languages to mean cat? Uh, yes, actually. Since the Christmas Applesauce Project pointed out that Kelly is cat in High Valerian. The Christmas Chronicles. It was the only one I thought I could get away with it. Um, nice. Roman. But uh, the name actually comes from the name of one of the characters from Starcrossed because Roman looks like him, and he came home on the day of the series finale. Oh, fun. Yeah. So this. Okay. Uh, so if we pursue this, yeah, this is going to be just a different construction. Um, mm -hmm. I am fine with. Hmm. Wait a minute. What's what's um. What's this? Fall. This comes from fall. Which one? The or negation. So I'm trying to think. Yeah. I'm okay with the pronoun strategy. And then well, Mike had said, could we just specify tense with a phrase like before now or something like that? Certainly. Um, and context could, of course, provide that. Um, certainly, Juniper, certainly. didn't we get a word for turn away from or something like that? I remember we had talked. Hmm. That was, I think, one of the options we had talked about for negation. However... I don't think we have a word. However, for negation, you know what I, you know what I'm thinking, you know what I'm thinking. I do not know what you're thinking. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. Um, we may have to revisit this um, when we talk about subordination. But if we were to do this, I think that the, the negation would be, don't do that. I never want that. Why would you, have you seen this when it does this? When it's like, oh, you went to a new line. You must want to highlight the whole paragraph. It's like, no, yes. no. That, like, do you see what it's doing to me? I, I do. I it's, see it. It's saucing me. And then it just ruins everything after that. So. Uh, okay. All right, let me, let me break this down. So, um, what's happening here uh, is that negation, because you remember that negation agrees. Well, in this case, it doesn't agree because instead of negating any of the arguments, saying um, that, you know, that fell or that thing fell, uh, rather you are saying it fell that the following. So uh, this is essentially a subordinate clause here. Um, and so, oh, no, no, no. Oh, wow. Did you see that? Natalie, did you see that? See what? Okay, so the pool noodle was, by the way, this is on camera over here, just, just so you know. The pool noodle, it got caught by the garage and it started to compress it. <laughs> and then, like, it actually got to a point where it pushed the garage back up and it popped out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> a Matt, pool was, noodle. Why was there a pool noodle under your garage standing up? Well, that's where we keep the pool noodles, which is oddly not near the pool, but we use them more for sword fighting than in the pool. Um... <laughs> Anyway, so, um, so yeah, so what's happening here, just with these copular constructions, <laughs> is that um, you will have tents of a kind, or at least aspects of a kind. Um, so, um, I can't honestly think of a, a situation where you would use this. 
have to remind myself of Oko. Mm. So it would be the um, the imperfective. Just I, a second. Oh, there we go. I see where it's coming. My eyes immediately went to the first O in Oko, which is first person plural. Seen, you know, the plain form yeah. and reduplicated form. And I was trying to figure out why all of them were first person. So uh, I think what this is, this is going to be a combination of it was not that, and it may mm -hmm. still be the case. And also it used to be that and is no longer the case. Whereas this okay. one is always like it is not the case and it yeah. continues to not be the case. Yeah. That. So that, that makes actually sense. makes the negation very simple. Because you only need to know those two things. It's always third person singular uh, with an expletive uh, subject um, that, of course, is unstated. So that makes that very simple. If we decide that we're going to do something special with subordinate clauses, that there's going to need to be some sort of kind of subordinator in there, then we'll have to reinsert it here, maybe. Um, but we can probably get by without because that's that's just a thing that happens, and that's fine. Um, Oh yeah, he wasn't a father, but is now. No, that's um, something that is going to have to be. Well, wait. Right. No. Yeah. That's this. That's this. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. Sorry. Um, uh, and then okay. So then for copula, the actual positive one. If. Um, I think it depends on how we end up doing this. Mike had just asked, should the o i me ada be o i me me ada? But that's gonna have we made that decision yet on the i me ada versus i me me ada? Uh, we haven't, but yes, okay. you are you are correct. Um, it probably is not necessary because just by doing this, you know what it you know what's happening. But yeah, absolutely, you should be able to, if we're going to do that. Yeah. Also, in theory, we can use this negation for other purposes. I mean, we're still going to have our negation, but um, you could also just use it for it is not the case that. Right. So that's nice. That's nice that that exists. Um, but yeah, back to the copula. So um, things that I have used for a copula when I want a verb as a copula, or be were, were things like you know acting as, mm -hmm. or like you know what are you talking about over there or doing or something like that. I don't know. My uh, I think I. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to get a little pick me up here. <laughs> uh. Need some Copico inspiration. Copico, the spinach in our non Popeye present. <laughs> mm. Oh God, it's so good. Mm. Mm. Anyway. Interesting. Now. You give me your impressions. Just my impressions. Just solve this problem for us. These are always the hardest decisions. Um, mm -hmm. And what's interesting is even like in translations and things like that, it's not even necessarily that the copular constructions get used very much, but you want to be able to make sure they're good. Yeah. Um. I feel like, though, a verb is almost needed. If we're going to have the adjectivey senses be verbs, then it's always there's always going to be a verb represented. Well, that would make it very know. it would it would make it very clear then uh, if there is no verb, what is going on? That's very true. When, in which case, that would be fine. Could do the opposite of this. So it is the case that. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, Imeada is fine. 
What is uh, hop? That's hop, right? Which one? Oh, is that for the imperative? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what is? Oh, um. Mike says, could we do seems as the copula in the sense of is seem to be um, if we do some verby stuff? Otherwise, Mike personally likes the copy pronoun. That would make it Lucy. Seems very formal for rabbits. Which one does? Lucy. Oh, for his scene. <laughs> Lucy! Oh, man. But in my head, I heard Lucy as in Lucy Goosey. Mm. And so I'm like, why is that Lucy? Like, yeah. what's loose about it? Wow. My brain is on it today. Okay. Okay. So I like having something. So the copy pronoun would be my bow. Yeah. And then, of course, it wouldn't be necessary for un or for the, right. uh, the second person because there's a pronoun already there. Um, right. And it wouldn't be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of warming to it. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay, so in Angala, uh, I'm going to use this A. Well, let's, uh, there's no O word copula. Hang on that. Um, instead, a copy pronoun is used for non pronominal arguments. Is is yeah, is used uh, to separate non pronominal arguments. And a and a quick and a quick question here, since. Um, and you're going to have to be the authority on this since you are the linguist. Um, should, is there, should we even have a discussion about what order these things should go in? Oh, you mean like the rabbit is a mother type thing? Yeah. Whether it should be ada meime or ime meada? Yeah. I, I don't think so. I mean, wouldn't you just put it I mean, I guess, actually, since we're technically VO, I mean, technically, it is VOS language. Oh. I mean, it made sense just to establish rabbit. Yeah. She is mother. Instead of mother, she is rabbit. It makes sense to do whatever you're doing first if the copy pronoun is based on the first one, right? Um, with the copy pronoun, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Without the, uh, uh, if if you were to if you were to do it the other way, it would have to be something like. That. That. So Nakai says it would just be a salience thing, right? So whatever comes first is what's already in view, which to me makes sense. Chris says like topic fronting, hmm. and that to me. Okay, just for pure phonology, not phonology for pure aesthetic. Uh huh. I like ime me ada better than ada ime me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Though I like the way you said it. Um, I, I think it's defensible. I just wanted to raise the question. 
so that everybody could see that I raised it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Although I do, the more I say to my head, adding me. That's kind of cute. But, well, she now I've just, like, did a flip a room. Mm. What's your preference? All right, my preference is what we already came up with, but let me think through okay. this. Maybe. No, no, this makes sense. All right. This we're makes good? sense. Yep, yeah, we're good. I was trying to think of something clever to say while you were thinking, and then I <laughs> started reading the comments, so I just sat here smiling in silence. Um, Destinova did just ask a question. So what if you had a noun case just for equational sentences? Like the copula was a posture verb, like stand, that fell out of use. So like stand, first person singular, teacher, locative. Hmm. Oh yeah, but it, it wouldn't be in that order. Or, oh wait, hold on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, is that real? What Ralphie said? But anyway, um, yeah, that that is, um, that is, well, I, I don't think we're going to use it here, but that is a definite possibility. But we might use it in just a second as we get to these. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's, that's a really good one. Desdenova has a good one there. Um, but, oh, I mean... The verb is the head. The verb is always the head. But um, okay, so yes, that etymology was correct mm. from Rafi. Wow, that's wild. So the greeting was literally, I can't pronounce it, but mm -hmm. there is a s suchao vosotro, um, meaning literally, I am your slave. Oh, yeah, I get it. So just like, you know, just like, like, a, like I'm your obedient servant. Kind of like how they used to do letters in Old English writing in Middle English. Mm. So it was Although talking Chris about saying, oneself, not the person. Yeah, and Chris is saying there may be some controversy. Ooh. Maybe not over that. Maybe it's over the verb as the head or the subject. <laughs> oh, if there was a controversy over the subject being the head, I am firmly in the verb camp. Obviously, the verb. <laughs> the verb is like the heartbeat of the sentence. It decides everything. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, we don't need that. Let's do... Mateus, verbs are not the worst, they're the best. <laughs> you can't live life without verbing. <laughs> no, I just wrote I am a verb, gosh darn it. <laughs> yeah, you are. You live life <laughs> in action. <laughs> Oh, don't do that. Oops. And then, um... And then... We need that sounded beautiful. Yeah, it's doorbell chimes. Now we need two um, inanimate nouns. Um, Just to be able to say, like, one is the other. Yeah, we should probably do both edible and inedible. We 
could say sassafras is a tree. Is a tree with leaves. That's right. We could. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Gonzalez, and that we need the. Oh. And then tree. No, with that's leaves. not that's not the distinction that we have in the pronouns. We need a. We need a. Mouse. It's Wika. Okay, but but this one's fine. What is uh? What's our word for tree? Uh, is. F E N G H A. F E N G H A. Feng Ha? Feng Ha. Okay, and then what is the pronoun that we need there? It's like. That is going to be like to stall as I look for the color chart that I know is here. There it is. Um, that is going to be two. Assuming, is sassafras, though, since it gets the animate plural, is it going to be a non-rabbit animate, which would be ja, but the third person inanimate is two. Wait, but sassafras doesn't get, it gets, it gets the edible it's plural. edible. That right. was a different conversation. Never mind. I just made it a character in my head. It's okay. Dark right. Horse understood what I meant. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then you are going to need, you wanted to do mouse? Yes. Right? Or, or, or were we saying that, or do mice also get the rabbit? We had talked about it getting the rabbit because they were friends of rabbits. But did we make a decision, and did we write it down somewhere? I don't think so, but Chris is saying the same thing, so I'm not the only one. Um, yeah. I'm seeing if... Hmm. I mean, we definitely talked about a mouse being part of the group. I see those notes, but we did not make a formal declaration and we don't have any other animate nouns that are not rabbits do we or that are not a... hmm as far oh that wouldn't be part of that that pronoun category assuming that a mouse is indeed part of that no <sighs> brother um let see what the pronoun is real quick. There's a lot of stuff under there. Ja. Ja. Yeah, ja is the, the pronoun we're aiming for. Um, well, let's do this. This is going to have to be a variable. Um, we should have a, we should have a, a better way of tagging our variables that we can go back and replace them. Um, let's do, uh, what don't I use? I don't use that. I never use that. Okay. So now if it has double parentheses, well, occasionally that will appear in, in phonological rules, but okay. So whenever we get a word for cat, we'll put cat in there. Just the, This is just for the example. Okay. And then um, now we need a plural. What's the plural of rabbit? Um, it, let me double check before I just say off the top of my head. I can scroll the correct direction. It is asme. And the plural of ada is quada, yes? Sada. Sada. Right. Asme sa sada. Quada would be an inedible, inanimate object. Right, that's our mother's. For the sake of completion, for 
maximal clarity. Let's do, actually, let's just do it like this. Let's save. Well, why did I do that? That doesn't save a lot of time. Sass. They are mothers. Okay. Okay. So then, then um, let's make a note about negation. Uh, how about, okay, wait, formally, um, there's, there's no tense distinction in any of these popular constructions. Thus, for example, um, could mean I am a rabbit, I was a rabbit, or I will be a rabbit. Uh, to make these distinctions, uh, I'm losing my words here more clearly. One uses extra verbiage. Is that close? Okay. I don't pronounce that as three syllables. I just say verbiage. But what about the I? I don't know. I guess I just decided it wasn't important. My verbiages. It's avatars running again. <laughs> I'm seeing. Yeah, I have no idea why I don't say approved Okay. Now. And then negation. Alright. Uh, okay, when negated, uh, one uses either O or Oko in front of the entire copular extra, uh, construction. Uh, how would we say this? O is more common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, because that just means was not or used to be. And the other one you had said would be the one that's like, um, it never, like, yeah. <sighs> I just waved my hands around. That comes across very well on a live stream. Who oh, is? Huh. Now I'm be now I'm thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the construction or about I, well, I'm thinking about the actual meaning distinction. I'm thinking about actual usage here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, I ask you, is Will sleeping right now? Mm-hmm. And you say he's not sleeping. Of course, that would be a totally different construction, but let's right. just say he's not a sleeper. <laughs> no, but that's, that's silly. That's silly because these are copular constructions. What am I thinking? Like... Uh, how about he's not a student right now? I guess, but that's also kind of weird because it's like he's still a student. He's just not in school at the moment. Okay. Right? Well, like... Oh, he's not a swimmer anymore. But then that's he a tough to. one because he used to be. Right. Am I... I, I think I'm just letting other negation confuse me right now. Never been much of an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just drag him. Anything else you're not good at? No, he'll tell you that himself. <laughs> Swimming was his only athletics until he gave that up. 
Mm. In case anyone's wondering, he's a musician through and through. Yeah. My cousin is a, a very strong swimmer because she is on, like, the Junior Olympic water polo team and has been doing water polo for years. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. Um, okay, so it's like, because we're only... We're only dealing with copular constructions. Only dealing with copular constructions. So, mm -hmm. like, like, are you a teacher? And it's like... Okay, yeah, O is more common. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, um, I guess, um, Oko implies that one is currently not or that that this state is currently not in effect uh, but makes no implication about the past or future state of the state there's got to be a better way to write this this is ridiculous uh, but I, I was just thinking, like, what's something that you're not? Like, I got it. Are you okay. an Olympian? And it's like, no, I'm not right now. And you're right. asking somebody that was in the past Olympics and didn't qualify for the current Olympics, but may qualify for the next one or is planning on it or is something so it's like at the moment no i am not an olympian but they are implying that that could change and then o has no o is just like i'm not an olympian yes which makes sense yes mm-hmm does this actually make sense? Um, so Oko says it could change. Yes. O doesn't give that impression. And so yeah. the only reason you would really use Oko is if you want to make it clear, like, not at the moment. Yes. But like, that is something that is a possibility for my future. So, like... A lot of my students want to be teachers, and so if I ask them, are you a teacher, they have to say no, but they're hoping to become certified, therefore they would want to say OCO, not O. That's, an, that's the best example yet. That is the best example yet, yes. Uh, yes. So in other words, uh, it can be used to imply a hopeful change of state. Uh, State, uh, um, or, or to imply a temporary cessation of the state. Okay. Um, I hope I read that and understand it at some point in time. Um, and that's the thing, um, uh, since we don't have other nouns, I mean, rabbit is something you kind of always are. I guess uh, mother. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes, here are two instructive examples. Um, the, so, o i me me ada. Uh, and then rabbit is not but maybe one day uh, and there's probably a lot when it comes to you know Gricean makes in here 
uh, kind of like with uh, Bachelor, where it's like there's a domain of relevance. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it seems to be like okay to call, you know, some guy anywhere in the neighborhood of like 18 to 60 a bachelor. But it's a little peculiar to call a two-year-old a bachelor. Mm -hmm. It's like technically true, but just doesn't seem relevant. Um, so you would probably also use O with like, you know, a two-day-old rabbit in this example. Yeah. Um, two-day-old. Yes. Um, uh, Destinova, yeah, I think that it, for if you come up with that context, uh, yes, I think absolutely. Um, and there is nothing for uh, will never be. I think that's going to have to just something where you just use extra verbiage. Or extra emphasis. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> you made me add that. Yeah. <laughs> There, um, and it's like, uh, mm -hmm. I, oh, I want to say this, uh, with O, um, I think, uh, it's, it is perfectly acceptable and one would expect to use O if you say like, you know, like, like O, like O ime me ada, uh, the rabbit was not a mother, but, and then you use but. And follow it up with ime me ada. So, in other words, you could that was that's a perfectly licit construction, and what it would be understood as uh, the rabbit was not a mother at the time that you were asking about, but now the rabbit is a mother, and that's fine. Uh, but that wouldn't work with oko. That just wouldn't make any sense at all with oko. Mm -hmm. Is that important? Because oko is just going to be oko is just going to be used more frequently just because there is no extra connotation besides uh more frequently but it's just not more frequently but also it implies that it, it's it's looking at the entire um state as a whole that has a mm -hmm. definitive end point um with no implication about the state not starting again at some point or starting for the first time at some point. Mm -hmm. So you could say, oh, ime me ada, uh, but ime me ada, and then if you wanted to now, like add a word for now mm -hmm. right at the end there, that could still work. Um, I kind of do want to make a note about that just so I don't forget. Um, uh, 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 oh, darn it. Maybe cancelled by uh, a second proposition that implies the negated state is currently in effect because it implies that a whole state has been uh, completed or, or that the, the state in question has an endpoint mm -hmm. um, this name Said that is boundless. Okay. What if you retired? So you used to be a teacher, but mm -hmm. you're not anymore. Yeah. Could you use the oime me teacher construction? Um, with like a, a now or some sort of time particle? Yes, with a but. Mm -hmm. So like, because the, the state is permanent at this point. In other words, mm -hmm. you say like, I'm not a teacher right now. However, I used to be. Um, mm -hmm. But you could also use oko and that's fine. I'm not a teacher now, but I used to be. 
Okay. Um, and I think that's fine. But once a teacher, always a teacher, you know? That's true. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> then that's done. So we can turn our attention to uh, this copular construction. So this is where uh, we, I think, probably ought to have some sort of verb, and it should be something like sit or stand or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, something stationary, I think, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so that's sit, stand, lie. What do you like? Lie. You like lie? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have that yet, right? No. Okay. Although, we... to, be, to be fair, do we have sit or stand? No. Well, obviously, I can't. By the way, I have a statue, a small statuette of a rabbit next to my door. Um, and I call him Standing Rabbit because he's standing up like this. You should take a picture. Nice. I should, actually. I have two rabbit statues now. Thanks to thanks to Aaron, she got me a second one that holds a little lantern. He's in our flower bed. That's lovely. I love it. Um, um, so we do have some hmm. um, name forms, or we have, of course, some of the the, the words that didn't go through on um, the poll. Um, we have Chavi, which kind of sounds fun and different from anything else that we have so far. Um, Chalo, Lasma. Uh, we're, let's do two separate things for a moment. Write some of uh -huh. write some of those down b or beneath on this page seventeen, um, mm -hmm. right b below below where I'm highlighting. I'm gonna go back uh -huh. and take a look at something. Um, so yeah. Oh, it's all sorts of format crazy. Um, don't, don't judge me. So, how do we get that? Yeah, it's just a Okay, so I'm 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 sorry. I'm looking at the recommendation about the uh O is a proclitic when it comes before a vowel. Uh we only get ha as a voiced version of ha. Um, and we don't have ha. Uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the negative comes from oak with a K, and so it would become a G. Um, and so with your proclitic idea where there is voicing happening, it would actually be OG. Where was that, page 17? Um, so... This is what you were. This is what would happen. Ogime. Um, I I hear that you think it would be cool. I'm not as in love with it. Um, especially with the way that this negation is working because it's, it's, uh, uh, there's a subordinate clause there. Essentially, you know, what you have is this, right? The, <laughs> I mean, if you want to, if you want to go full X bar on this thing. Uh, what do we need here? This is what you have right here, right? 
I mean, I know I know clitics can overleap that, use an old word, but it just seems peculiar. That does seem peculiar. Becoming wow. Well. Now that I'm paying attention to what you're typing after. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of like this thing getting special sentential intonation. So, you may may add that. Oh, you may. Oh, you may may add that. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm... I, I mean, to be fair, sometimes negation in English is incredibly hard to hear. Yeah, And that's we still true. do it, so... Did we talk about that on the stream before? You know... Can't we did, like I talked can. about the difference between can and can't. Yeah. Because <laughs> can and can't. <laughs> and honestly, stuff. like when it's on a did, oh. it almost becomes swallowed. Like, oh, she didn't go. Like, you barely even get anything yeah. there. Oh, I will add this, and this goes for O or Oko. I am definitely not allergic to the I, suggestion of having a kind of epithetic glottal stop that uh, occurs there just as a, an epiphenomenon. So it's not like a marker. It's not an actual thing. It just happens. Um, Although I am allergic to how the glottal stop looks bolded and italicized. I know. That did not look pretty. No, I, uh, I clearly I needed to do work on this uh, Palatino X font. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do like the sound of that because that does set it apart. That is nice. Yeah. Okay, let's let's return. I've to got the... I've got five options for you. On page seventeen. These are all very long, aren't they? Except for this one. They are. And so I was looking at the top three mm -hmm. more seriously. I like the sounds of the bottoms, and they come from roots that are much shorter. Um, especially this one comes from a nice little root. It just <laughs> it grows through all the phonological changes. Um, didn't, didn't we use this for something? Didn't it become a prefix? IPA Unicode 5.1. A wonderful 1. question. We had some sort of prefix, right? Um, we have Kalimes. Kayala Kalimes. What is, what is it, though? No, that was just examples. Never mind. Oh my god. Oh, hub before vowel? Then what separates the A ah and the vowel? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, what was that? Um, what was that prefix that we did? It was K. It was something with a K. Kali, thank you, Mike. Mike Catalinich like got to... it. It was Kali. Okay. So never mind, never mind. So so Kalo is still on the table. Um, so actually, that the Charlie kind of gave some different sounds to work with. Yeah. Um, uh, I tried to eliminate some of the longer ones other than that. Um, uh, can you give... We can also just randomly pick one. Can you... Well, I want to I wanna try them out. Um, can you give me um, what our thing is? What is it? Ah? And Edulu? Is that right? Our, our standard locative preposition? <laughs> Yes, I'm going to double check that though, but ah uh, is like at, right? Oh my gosh, where did our preposition list go? <laughs> How have we done this? Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah, so ah um, uh is at, and it's also what we ended up using for possession. Well, I guess uh, there's, uh, we also have an on, don't we? So the question is, what would we use with grass? 
In English, we use on. In most languages, they just use the generic locative at. So also we use do have in. it on top of. <gasps> what is our in derived from? In is derived from inside womb. womb. So womb. Well, because what I was thinking was, of course, in a world where grass is not mowed and where rabbits at least used to be quite small, um, they would kind of be in it. You'd be, be kind of like being true. in a kiddie pool. Yeah. Depending on the type of grass. That would be us, U.S. And that's uh, inside? Yes. Hmm. And then there's uh, there's also the idea of it being a pawn if it bends the grass. Uh, what is a pawn or on top of? On top of is Z, Z I. Huh. And that comes from the root for flee. I'm gonna I'm gonna write this down as a potential. We'll see if we come up with something better. Uh, potential pull. The grass. Uh, versus us versus z and maybe we could open that up for other types of things it could be on or in mm. mm -hmm. oh yeah we do have to start thinking yeah. End of episode things. Uh, Juniper's also asked a very good question uh, about separate words for being submerged uh, in water. But it's kind of like just a question of, you know, it, it really is just the question what, what preposition you want to use for that. Um, mm -hmm. Which is the same question every time when you're doing the language, right? Um, it's, it's, it's telling when you look at uh, a conlang and it's like, the prepositions always line up with English, so it's like you know. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, this so this might be good, um, but let's just choose one for right now because that's not what's at issue. What's at issue is this Charlie. Okay, the rabbit is on the grass, so that's Charlie Edulu. Um, and then Lasma. And then, Kalo. Uh, so just in terms of pure sound, what do you like? Chali ime usedulu, lasma ime usedulu, Kalo ime usedulu. Say them again. I think I like the last one, but I think it's because it reminds me of something else. So say them again. And you know what? We got to do something else. Something else. Just so that we are sure. We have to do something else. And this is what we have to do. Right? Um, because I, I, I want to make sure I have this right. This doesn't uh, voice, right? The cha doesn't voice. But everything else does. Is that correct? Find the first consonant after the first syllable. <laughs> yes. Assume the consonant is the coda of the previous vowel. And apply sign, sound changes Chani, as if Chani. the coda were there. Um, Leave the coda, attach the prefix. Yes. Okay, so yeah, this one does because the L is vocalic, right? Yes. Um, this one Wait, doesn't... Wait, did we? <laughs> uh, Alk is saying uh, kakalo. Um, be, well, if the L... Just a second. Where are our sound Man, changes? We just had an example. Where did I find that example? Voice of step volition. Respectively between vowels. Plus vocalic. Consonant plus vocalic. And that does not include L. L is not plus vocalic. You're right. So, kakalo. 
La Las Ma. So yeah, we have Tiala becoming like Chichala. Cacalo. Yes, yeah, so you're right. You're absolutely right. I should be pronouncing this correctly. Cacalo. So, but not for Chali. Chali, it's Chali. So Chali ime usedulu. Lasma ime usedulu. Kalo ime es usedulu. All right. And then for the um, present or the, the imperfective. Cha chali ime usedulu. Lalasma ime usedulu. Kakalo ime usedulu. And, you know, without the aspiration, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm interesting. I am, I am interesting. <laughs> See? <laughs> So some people are saying, well, some people, Destinova said plosives are underrepresented, and that probably is true. Um, Where? Oh, there I see. <laughs> I see Lasma, Calo. Um, I'm leaning toward the Calo. I, I just like the sound of it. Um, kind of like it too. Yeah. And I like the other two. Like, I definitely don't want to lose those as words. It's just for oh, sure. this particular construction, Calo just sounds nice. Okay. No, I like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's delete that. We'll keep those. And then uh, the next question is, what exactly is it going to mean? We decided on lie. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Calo, you may have That's good. All right, so let's, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in here so I don't forget. Yeah, look at that. We got another example right there. Um, I am going to keep forgetting that the duplication rule, though. Yeah, but I mean, I like the way that you say it. It makes it sound so much more authoritative. <laughs> when I just read it out to you? Yeah. Do this, then this. Yeah, it's just a set of instructions that you follow. Uh, to lie, to lie down. Uh, to be lying down. And then put a little asterisk by this one to be at, uh, to be on. And this is a locative copula. Good. And then I'm going to write to be verb. Hello, see entry, and then to be at. We don't need to see entry for that one because that's actually what it is. And to lie. And Nakai asked, is the phonetic transcription of um, Kayalu missing an ash? It is not because when it is. Um, Remember, in a, in a, in a, what do you call that? A rising diphthong. Um, it mm. ah didn't go to a. Ah. So that's why it's it, even with with Charlie. It was it was Charlie, not Chali. It's Charlie. Mm -hmm. Same thing with ya and wa. Um, nice. Even in stress position. Okay, so um, that is good. Let's go back to where we were writing that up and with I think yeah all right um, page 17 page 17 uh, well I mean page 16 is the yeah. larger list before we get into negation of copula um, okay when uh, 
when a locative construction is called for. Uh, Ingala uses the verb cut up. It's shown below. Um, okay, so Gala makes Dulu with the note that might change. Uh, the rabbit was on the grass. And Kakalo, Kakalo, a rabbit is on the grass. Um, and then just as a note, uh, so that we always remember to negate this blockative copular construction, one uses standard negation as one would with any other verb. Um, and negation is coming right after this, so we don't need an example. Okay. It's actually right before it. What? No, it's, it's right before it. No, it's right after. There it is. Oh, that negation. I thought you meant the the copular negation above it. No, no, okay. no. Okay. Um, no, we're good. Uh, okay. Standard negation. Let's see the next section. So, I think for my personal preference in looking at time. Yeah. I actually like this potential poll cool. as the actual poll. Yeah. And then we can right now address the final two examples, right? Which were be a rabbit and do not be a rabbit. Yeah. And so we can do that right now with our remaining 13 minutes. Yeah. So. And that way, because a lot of people in the comments are talking about how rabbits would view themselves in terms of on the grass, in the grass, etc. And so I, I honestly, like, I'm, I like all of them. And so I'm happy with that being a poll for the patrons. All right. Sounds good. So for this, um, I actually had um, a different thought. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. This is my thought. We don't need this anymore. We have it. Right. Uh, okay. Is that towards? Is Lou towards? Yes, but let me double check mm. that I'm not incorrect. Mm. Yes, Lou is toward. feel so much pain. Do you see where I'm going with this? Just a second, I have to get back to the page. I have to remind myself what whiffs means. That is just... It comes from fall. Whiffs negative? Yeah. So this is do so not, this is do not be a rabbit. Do not be a rabbit. Okay, so this is do not fall toward being a rabbit. I don't think it works. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. What would the positive form be? Would it? Yeah, that, uh, again, I don't know. I don't know. 
This dog is just not salty right now. <laughs> Could we make it? Because our imperative construction originally came from hop. Hop. And could we have like a separate hop on it? You rabbit. I think maybe. Okay, okay, okay. If you phrase it that way. <laughs> um, what is it? Sa? Is that hop? No, you. Oh, you. It's either that or east. I was going to I don't hop remember. I. You is east for the singular. Oh, yeah, you see me? Hi. <laughs> you see me? Hi. <laughs> so it's like you a rabbit hop to it. I mean, there's always become and stop. That's that's kind of a fallback and it could still exist. Um And so that's fine. But it's like, you know, imagine, imagine child rabbits playing video games, you know, and they're playing some sort of cooperative video game where they have like 15 characters to choose from and they're just choosing four. And and one of them, you know, wants to choose, you know, I don't know, like, you know, Itzaku. And the other one's like, don't be Itzaku, you know? That's that's what I'm going for here. In this case, it's, you know, so don't be Itzaku, be like, be Sassy or something. It's, obviously, that's going to be a name. That would be Sassy, obviously. wouldn't it? It would be Sassy. Yes, it would be Sassy. <laughs> Sassy and Shassy is how it would be. Um, so it's like something simple like that. Something simple rather than defaulting to creating a verb that means become or using a verb that means stop, uh, right? Because those I feel like are more specific. I wanted something more basic. Um, There has also been the suggestion to go backwards a second uh -huh. to actually have two verbs for the locative um, calo for something that's, I guess, just more general, and then another one for anything like that's submerged or underground. Mm. But I think that would be more prepositional work than the actual verb for those. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, so the idea is that the, the locative copula is kind of like semantically bleached. Uh, even though yeah. in this case there's not too much difference. I mean, there's not any difference between the two. Um, it just doesn't feel like it, you know, when you're using it as the copula. Mike said, what about a rabbit isn't you? So kind of reversing the negative copula construction. Huh. Huh, what would that look like? Uh, oh, no, peace. I, 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 hmm. I, I guess, I guess most of our words are going to end in, in, um, most of our words are going to end in vowels, aren't they? Uh, quite a few already do, and yeah, actually almost all of them have to, unless it's one of our super codas. Because there will be a copy vowel if the well, root ended in a vowel, in a yeah, consonant. Yes, so, so it's either going to end in an S or a vowel, um, mm -hmm. and because of that, most of them are going to end in vowels. So this could become it's a little copula there, huh? <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, a little, little clitic is what I meant. A little clitic. And I would say it's just for second person plural. Uh, I'm sorry, second person singular. Second person plural is cease, right? Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I kind of like that. I, I, I mean, I like it. I hope others like it. Yeah. 
Mike does, I think. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, let's do that. Okay. All right, so I'm writing this up. Um, there are, uh, what are these? Uh, command forms for popular instruction. This is both positive and negative. Perform a positive command with a copular instruction. Um, use the command article. I in the sentence final position after a standard popular clause. Okay, and we're going to do two examples. Um, first one is our so let's see, may I be a rabbit? Oh, brother, are we going to have to do that song now? Be a what? rabbit with all the force of a raging river, you know, with all the strength of a great typhoon. Oh, my gosh, we're moving on. <laughs> okay. But, no, sorry. I Let's would. get down to business to defeat Is that a, the I hounds. Is that outside our house? <laughs> Sorry, the ice cream truck. It, I wasn't just hearing things. You've asked about that before. You, you know what go that buy means. One, huh? You know what that means. <laughs> I'll give you money for the ice cream truck if you want one. Yeah. I was talking to my my husband, not my son, by the way. Yeah, COVID creamery. <laughs> Get it? Oh. All right. But we can also do this with. But I will. Um. Chris was telling me about the ice cream truck when he was a kid. Where I lived, there was no ice cream truck. That was just a myth. <laughs> Where he lived, he actually saw the ice cream truck. Oh, yeah, we had ice cream cup. They don't visit the country. <laughs> uh, uh, note, uh, commands like can be issued to third-person arguments. No, wait, to non-second person arguments. There we go. And so we can also do there. Aha! Alright. Oh, nice. But yeah, you totally missed my changing out huns for hounds. You know, Hounds, I'm, dogs. I did. I'm to sorry. To defeat the hounds. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Ah. I was having an ice cream truck moment. I missed what you were saying. I think I that do that's. Apologize. I think that's that's going to become an expression now. Jesse was just having an ice cream truck moment. <laughs> yes. And it's when I get excited and distracted by something outside the window Squirrel. which is why by the way when i teach i actually prefer mm. not to have windows in the classroom otherwise suddenly i don't know i'll see a squirrel and i'll be staring outside and you know trail off mid-sentence oh i would get up and photograph it i mean a squirrel is an event <laughs> mm. um by the way ava says defeat the buns instead of the buns. <laughs> That's that's the song from the uh, from the cat's perspective. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Uh, for for negative commands, the order of uh, oh sorry, the order of the arguments is flipped, and standard uh, copular negation is used uh, when it occurs. 
uh, with a sec. Okay, wait, 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 wait sorry. When a command is issued to a second person singular argument and the previous and, and the and the first argument or noun phrase ends with a vowel the second person singular pronoun politicizes okay so let's do some examples where okay so obviously we're gonna have our big one oops oh, oh darn it oh me Oh, um, emails, and that's like that. don't be a rabbit. Can we have something that you don't want to be that ends with an N or an S? Is there anything like that? One moment, please. Any noun, actually, any noun is fine. All right. Um, so far, it's all. Or the opossum. <laughs> oh, Ava, you win. What was the suggestion? Sorry, it's just it's 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 partly how she wrote it, so. <laughs> Ugh, so far, un is the only one ending. One, I'm still going though. Wow, we really Here, we a, really like the a quick way to do this. Create a word. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Verb, verb. Zeus. Don't sassafras be a tree. Don't be a sassafras tree. <laughs> oh, and Sally's, yeah. Which is like a, a really weird thing to say because it's like, don't be perfect. But, you know. You know. Since, since. I get told that all the time, you know, stop being perfect. Okay, so then. He oh. just glosses over that. <laughs> 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 and no, that's not true. Don't be okay. Don't. Yeah. Besides that, in river, we really don't have many other things ending in a in a consonant. Oh yeah. Don't be a river. Duh. <laughs> Ozusis. <laughs> oh, I like that. Ozusis. Okay. That that's gotta. I'm I'm actually gonna flip this out. This has to be something. It's gotta be some sort of a an expression. The, this now has to be a synonym that's some sort of an insult. So like, I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. letting things go, like that shouldn't be let go. Oh, interesting. I was just, you or know. passing things on that you're supposed to be doing, like you pass the buck and make other people do it. Hmm. Because you just let it yeah. go away from you. It's a Your really, responsibility. It's a really different sense, but it makes sense. Both of them make sense. So it couldn't be both. It could only be one of those. Yeah, but I like that. <laughs> it's like oh, Mike here. says, "Don't go with the flow. Like, be your own person." Mm -hmm. or, At least I think that's what you meant by that, Mike. I'm just gonna add. Or in other words, be a bun. Be a bun. <laughs> See, I'm listening now. I'm not having an ice cream truck moment. <laughs> and then uh, let's see, what would this work as if we? Okay. Oh. Uh, let's see. So, so uh, sure. Let's just do that. Don't let me be a river. Yeah. This is mm. this is obviously a song right here. This is a song title. <laughs> obviously. Did you want to add a plural? You like the ome, um, oimesis? Yeah, I guess just to make it clear that there is no um, reduction that happens there. And then I saw Dark Horse um, had suggested the name a root be used for something meaning secret or hidden. So that is something that we could um, which root work in the no, just can't find it here. Um, 
the Nunfa, which becomes Ninpei. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is something that we could work in in the future, however that's going to be, but I can take note of that. Okay. All right. Cool. I think that's good, and... Yeah. We... <laughs> And I will delete this uh, shameful thing forever. Nobody will even remember it. Nobody will see it. Never existed. It's out. Okay. Okay, so good. Um, So yeah, let's see. Verbs, negation. Participles. They're probably not going to exist, you know? I don't know. Well, well, maybe. No, we'll we'll give it some thought. We'll give that some thought. Uh, relative clauses, uh, questions, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. I think we made some good headway See, today. It won't take us 99 episodes. <laughs> we got this. We got this. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, we already have our poll for patrons, so yeah. you guys know what you're going to be seeing if you're watching now. We'll be moving forward with that. Um and i think that's all for today okay so and so to all of you ozus cease <laughs> don't be rivers oh i'd have to make that plural probably i'd need zeus to be plural right don't you all be a river yeah don't be a single river i mean if you're going to be a river you know be your own river yeah so. <laughs> be your own river <laughs> <laughs> and stay grammar. Waiting. I was going to say waiting for the awkward. Waiting. How long does it take? Did you do some special motion so we know when the video actually hits it? Yeah, it changed windows. and it, So it's happened now. Oh, okay, there it goes. It's happened it now. Anyway, so just uh, start giving me your social security number real quick. Excellent. Yes, a 